Hello students, it's about time for exams and your request for the revision lecture modes of nutrition in fungi. I am just discussing it in short. First, let us discuss what is nutrition. Nutrition is the process of taking in food and converting it into energy and other vital nutrients required for life. Nutrients are the substances which provide energy and biomolecules necessary for carrying out the various body functions. All living organisms need nutrients for proper functioning and growth. But they show divergence in how they fulfill this demand. Some animals feed on simple inorganic compounds to meet their nutrient requirements, while others utilize compound, complex compounds. The mode of nutrition varies from one species to another. Let us first talk about types of nutrition. Broadly speaking, there are two types of nutrition among living organisms, namely autotrophic mode as you see that means auto means themselves as they can manufacture their own food material like the plants the all the all the phototrophs you can say which can uh, make use of sunlight in presence of sunlight make carbohydrates foods etc and heterotrophic mode all living beings require nutrition so that means there are nutritional requirements fungi are heterotrophs they also require nutrition so they are achlorophilus as such cannot manufacture carbohydrates or food using carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. They always depend on dead or living organic matter for their energy requirements. So what are the various modes of nutrition in fungi? So fungi can be, they can be saprophytes, they can be parasites, they can be symbionts or there can be predaceous fungi. Now let us discuss saprophytes. Saprophytic fungi obtain nutrition for dead decaying organic matter. That means they live on, on dead decaying organic matter. These fungi live on dead decaying organic matter or excreta of both plant and animal origin. Example being mucor, rhizopus, pencilium and aspergillus. Vegetative hyphae of these fungi directly absorb food materials from the organic matter. Saprophytic fungi may be of two types ectophytic saprophytes which grow on the surface of organic matter and endophytic saprophytic fungi which grow inside the organic matter. In some ectophytic fungi such as rhizopus, special absorptive structures such as rhizoids are developed for the easy absorption of food material. Saprophytic fungi produce exoenzymes, enzymes which act outside the cell. In some ectophytic fungi such as rhizopus, special absorptive structures such as rhizoids are developed for easy absorption of food material. Saprophytic fungi produce exo enzymes, enzymes which act outside the cell. You can see here some basidiomycetes, some mushrooms growing on the dead decaying organic matter. Now let us talk about the second group of fungi, the parasites. Parasitic fungi takes food from other living plants or animals. The living organisms on which the fungi parasitize are called host. And parasitic fungi are harmful to the host as they produce diseases in host organism. The relationship of the host and parasite in pathology is known as parasitism. Now let us discuss parasitism in detail. Parasitic fungi are... Uh, uh, of uh, following types obligate parasites these fungi can live only as parasites and obligate parasites cannot live on dead decaying organic matter that means they require a live host example puxenia which causes rust disease in many crop plants including wheat another type they are parasites but they can also survive on dead organic matter in the absence of living of the living host if the living host is there, all right. If it is not there, they will start living on dead decaying organic matter. They are actually called facultative parasites. Example being Tepharina. Now the third type, these fungi usually follow saprophytic mode of nutrition. Under certain conditions, they parasitize suitable host plants. For example, Fusarium, Pethium, which cause soft rot disease in crop plants. On the basis of location of parasites in host organism, parasites may be endoparasites or they can be ectoparasites. Endoparasites which live inside the host tissue and ectoparasites which live on the surface, outside surface of the host tissue. Parasitic fungi possess specialized absorptive structures called hostoria for the absorption of nutrients from the host cells. 
Hostoria are specialized hyphal modifications. Hostoria may be either cellular between two cells, intercellular between two cells or intracellular within the cell. Size and shape may be round, knob-like, club-like, branched or finger-shaped. Now, the another group of fungi, the symbionts. These fungi grow on or with other living organisms, but both of them are mutually benefited. Examples being lichens and mycorrhizae. Lichens are the symbiotic association between algae and fungi. Here, both fungi and algae are mutually benefited. One is chlorophyllous, so it will produce food, that is algae. And another one is achlorophyllous, that is fungi, which is a heterotroph, which will consume the food and again provide carbon dioxide and water to uh, the algae to fix it again to convert it back it into the food algae synthesize carbohydrates whereas fungi provide shelter for the algae mycorrhizae are the symbiotic association between fungi and roots of some higher plants mycorrhizae help in the absorption of nutrients by the host plant mycorrhizae may be ectophytic or endophytic Ectophytic mycorrhizae are external mycorrhizae and they are confined to the outer regions of the roots. They form a mantle from outside. Endophytic mycorrhizae are internal mycorrhizae. And we have another group of uh, mycorrhizae which are ecto-endomycorrhizae. They form a mantle from outside and penetrate inside the host tissue also. Example being VAM, now it's called AM fungi. Vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizae. Why they are called? Because they make vesicles and arbuscules, not like structure inside the host tissue. We have another type of fungi that is predaceous fungi. They are animal capturing fungi. They are predators. These types of fungi possess special hyphal traps called snares to trap and capture to trap, not tap, to trap and capture small animals such as nematodes and protozoa. They usually inhabit in the soil. They possess rapidly constructing hyphal traps or non-constructing -construct hyphal traps which hold the captive for long time. Example being orthobotrius, dactylella and dactylaria. These are of two types, nematophagus and zoophagus. The nematophagus feed on or, or, or trap nematodes in the soil and zoophagus which can take care of the protozoans which are not good for the which are not beneficial for the growth of the roots or the plants. So these fungi are called predaceous fungi. They are also called the friends of the farmers. Now you can see the pictorial representation of uh, the, uh, the, the, the these fungi, the predaceous fungi and here you can see the nematode. It will get strangulated by this ring and ultimately it will dry off by exhaustion and uh, the mycelium will absorb the whole nourishment of the whatever is there inside the body of the animal and ultimately only the integument will remain there. There is another type of ring also constructing and non-constructing type. In non-constructing one, the ring is formed, it goes around the body of the nematode, but it does not construct. Instead, it gives out hostoria, which penetrate into the uh, body of the nematode and withdraw nourishment from them. So, with that, I stop here with a big thank you to all my students. Hope this will help you in the exams. Like it, share it, subscribe it. Thank you.